profile. I've been a gardener for 20 years and I was an ornamental gardener and making hedges and mowing lawns and I just hated doing it. Oh, I just got to that stage of going, why am I keep doing this and why am I spraying all the lawns and doing all this bad stuff? So now, four years ago, I did a PDC with Tom Kendall um, up at uh, Sunshine Coast Permaculture Research Institute and it just made me flick my switch straight away. So now I want to introduce food to everyone's gardens or I'm throwing seeds out of my back pocket. <laughs> so even at even at work they don't know, but there could be some things that could possibly pop up. Oh, yeah. So uh, so the things I want to talk about is improving your soil, even if it's sandy soil. I've had earthworms at Sunshine Beach in the sand. So you can say so it's just building up layers and building up your soil. So all of these things here, things you can do to improve your soil, increase your organic matter, you know, encourage biodiversity. So don't just have, um, so when I say that biodiversity, just have a few of, of one plant and then have a few of them somewhere else. Don't just go and have all of one plant because that's when the pests and diseases will jump in there. So spread those plants around. Um, also, so also to have some ground covers in there to keep. You can have living mulches as well as as, as straw mulches. You can have uh, strawberries are a really good living mulch, um, and minimal tillage. I, I'm not a big fan of going in there with the fork. So even if you can create layers of organic matter and keep building it up, and then you, all you're going to do is dig a little hole and plant that seedling in there, um, and even the the end of this the seedling or the broccoli head cut it and then let it fall and chop it into the ground so all that organic matter just keeps going back into the ground and not into the bin or in your compost bin you can just put it straight in the ground there yeah do you pull things up when they're done yeah you can pull them up um and i try and oh yeah it says here leave the stubble so you know cut it right to the to this far and then it's going to slowly rot down into that ground and just chop up the leaves chop them up there and then yeah. so and the roots and stuff Yes. Yeah, so so yeah. So yeah. So all of the roots have micro um, bacteria on them. So they're releasing all that stuff even while they're dying. They're releasing more nutrients back into the soil. So my key thing wherever I go is get the soil right first mm -hmm. before you even go and plant plant food in there, mm -hmm. even if it's at Sunshine Beach in the sand or stuff like that. But when I've when someone's given me a banana sucker, oh, I've just had to put it in the ground at sand. But I collected all the pine needles around that banana sucker and put some newspaper underneath it, so the groundsman doesn't even know it's just appeared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've, I've taken a few pictures, and these ones are things that I'm really passionate about. So this is it's an American garden, but you can see they've taken it right to the edge. The house is just here and they, that's pretty much the street there. I couldn't get it all in, but you can see such diversity, flowers, you know, crops growing in there and it's right there. And I've said to people in here, the front yard verge, don't be afraid to push the boundaries. Do you know what I mean? Do you have to get council approval? I've done a design here and I'll talk about that, but I've done designs and if I believe that if you don't upset that footpath and you create a footpath in your footpath with like a mulch pathway and you can walk either side and you got to be prepared for people to pick your herbs and flowers, give it a go, they're doing a budroom and there's food on the street up there and they've sort of said, okay, it's okay. So I've actually spoken to council because I, I went up to food, Urban Food Street and they are back. Lilliums in there and uh, some kale and some marigolds but they've also got, you know, other plants, edible plants in there, and it makes it look presentable as well. You know, just going, are they growing a veggie gun or what are they doing there? Confuse them a little bit. That's what I say. And the other thing that I like to talk about is if you've got beds at home, use the edge, because the edge, I always look at this edge here, it's the most productive area. People just go, oh, we're planting the bed, but if you went all the way around the edge, you've got something that you can use, and it's, um, it's a border to stop grass. But they've got chives growing there and they've even got lettuce, frilly lettuce or whatever, celery, as an edge. So I've talked about some border edging plants there, uh, chives, strawberries, well strawberries are a bit of a runner, shallots, even garlic, just things that clump up and you're using that narrow little strip of any garden, even around here, I'll look at it and go, that's an edge, I can plant that. So 
go to the design. This is one that it's a bit cut, but it's it's one in Tawantin that I've done on a uh, 600 square meter block on the end of a cul-de-sac. So it's sort of a funny triangle that opens out at the back. This is the road. This is the footpath here. I've made a pathway through the footpath. Um, flowers and herbs trying to replicate this. Um, and then we've got vegetable gardens using the chicken tractor. So the chicken goes along and he's, because he gave me a list of all of the stuff that they wanted to grow. And I said, we could easily grow that and you'll be handing stuff over the fence. So a little chicken tractor moves along, eats the grass, manures the soil, and then you plant your seedlings virtually straight into that stuff with a little bit of mulch, sheep mulching down, and you're creating beds as you go along. So green beds and you'd plant out your 20 or 30 lettuce straight into that bed, into that little tiny plot, off you go. Yeah. Um, and also the other one is the uh, is is the people who don't live in the in the in, don't have a pot at all. So you can your pots are the key thing. Uh, shallow pots for you know the the annuals or the le or the leafy greens like lettuce, and then deeper pots you can actually grow eggplants and things and cauliflower and brassica in pots. So I've done a few of those little courtyard ones as well, and they've just only got five square meters of patio space and go right. What can we do? How can you eat some stuff? And I've looked at the trellis as well, looked at a pole and go, right, oh, you can have something growing up that. And they go, really? Now, let's put it in there. Don't be afraid to, you know, have a go. They have the ID soil that looks like it's, I don't know, it's completely organic, but yeah. it's got... Well, and sawdust pathway, so there was, and then you could actually move those beds onto the sawdust, so you're creating good soil under that sawdust in the newspaper. And that can happen anywhere. I can make that on concrete right here in three or four weeks if you want. Stuff. I've probably got a picture on the tablet, but I, it, mine was, you can buy, I looked at one yesterday and it was quite a fancy looking thing. Mine was just a dog pen that I bought on Gumtree and it was 800 uh, wide panels that, that clicked together. It didn't even have wheels, so it was, a, uh, it was a 800 wide and 1600 long. So, and then I just made a, a, a cage, put some tarp over the top of it and put a cage over the top of it so nothing could get to it and some steel on the side because we had um, foxes coming to try to get our chickens. So and they lived in there? They lived, I just had two chickens in there. Yeah, and then um, because of that width of the bed, 800, which is really easy to reach. So that was the width of these, 80 centimetres wide. Um, and then I just drag, physically dragged that chicken tractor along. So. Because I, literally we've talked numerous times about chicken tractors to prepare these beds. Yeah, so you, I would what make... What do they do, the chicken blowers? Dig it up or something? Yeah, well, ki oh, they've yeah. got those talons or the claws and yeah, that's what chickens do. So they scratch. Yeah. They scratch, they want to eat the grass and they're looking for the worms and they're pooping as well. So, yeah. and then I just gave it a little bit of a dig, put some mulch on there and put some, a, a bucket of... Move it up and move it up and move it up. Pretty much. So you've got that. All, and then I'll, and then it all joins into one bed, so it's really easy. Oh, happy, man. They were really happy. Yeah, yeah, I just had a, um, a, a, a lawnmower catcher in the back of it with some grass in it. So I just made it as cheap as I could. The, the, the thing that was the expense was the dog pen was $70, and I go, right, I, I can fix this and make it better and, and had it cheap. Yeah, so that, that worked really, really well. So you can go and buy a chicken tractor, I think, for $450 if you want something that looks pretty and nice, or for, say, $100, you can have a chicken tractor. And I think everyone should have a chicken tractor in their backyard. The eggs are just unreal, just eating your own eggs, you know? That's the start. So this one here is the key as well, the worms. Uh, they're compost worms, so not just your average garden worms. So those ones are the ones that you have in your worm farm. Everyone can have one. I've got one even on my back patio. It's only as big as this area here. And they might think I'm going out there because I empty the water back in every day. So it's getting really getting all that nutrients out of the worms. But worm farm here, everyone should have a worm farm in those back houses out there. Just I do have at home, I just use um, those plastic mayonnaise cannulators yep. from restaurants. I yep. just ask them if they have it in yep. any place. And they just package your kit to you. And if you build your own, you just use those buckets and you create a like a station. Yep. They don't even need to spend that much money. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, good. Yeah, that's yeah, that's mm -hmm. where it starts. So and then all of that stuff. 
I've actually sold the worm juice back to uh, groups like this or just fill it up in bottles and bring it back and you can use it as a liquid spray and then you've got those castings of all your veggie scraps going into your vegetable garden as well. So it's it's just cycling, just keep turning things over. Whatever you eat or you don't eat, goes back in the garden.